You're telling me what I got to do, but I've tried that before. Mm. I've jumped and shouted in church, but I, I still end up making the mistake. So, so preacher, you know, if you're going to tell me I got to do this, that's great, but I need to know how. Fine. Second Timothy two twenty one. If a man therefore purge himself mm. from these things, and the scripture was talking about gold and, and silver and earth, and it was talking about things of, of physical touch, carnal. And it was saying, if we purge ourselves from the desire of these things, we purge. You know, that's why we fast. Come on. Right. Yes, sir. I'm getting ready to come up on a fast starting January 1st. It's not a resolution, it's a fast. And I felt like the Lord specifically told me to do this. I am a sugar junkie. Mm. Oh, no. I used to be a crackhead. Now I'm a chocolate head. Uh -uh. Not just because I'm brown. Uh -uh. I know I look like a giant milk dud up here. Uh -oh. But I'm, I'm, I love chocolate. I eat chocolate just about every night. Sometimes twice a day I have chocolate. Oh, now no. I'm this close to being a diabetic. <laughs> and they told me several times, you know, the doctors, they say you're borderline. And then, I keep, then I start working out and, and I start eating less chocolate and then I get better and then, man, that chocolate calls my name. Ooh, especially after I eat. Anybody who used to smoke, you know you have that good meal and you're a smoker right after you eat, you gotta smoke a cigarette. Right, right when you wake up, you gotta smoke a cigarette. Before you go to bed, you gotta smoke a cigarette. That's my chocolate. And so the Lord spoke to me and said, 100 days, you're not gonna have chocolate. No, I don't smoke anymore. I'm good with you. 100 days, no chocolate. Just saying it makes me kind of sweat more. Oh my Lord. But the Lord, I'm like, why God? We, I'm living for God. You don't punish me like this? But the Lord showed me that if I do that, it's a fast. I have fasted no food. I fast, I've done Daniel fast. I've done multiple days. I've done multiple weeks. I've done lots of fasts, but I've never done this one. And the Lord showed me that when you do this, it's going to change you. And when I was doing the sermon, it was saying that I'm purging this craving out of my system. Now, I stopped drinking so much soda. I used to drink, when I used to sit down and eat dinner, uh, let's say we go to King Dragon, I could easily drink three, four, maybe even five sodas. Easy. I can barely finish a soda now when I go and eat. Because I stopped drinking sodas for a while. And then when I started, I didn't have that same craving because I learned how to get rid of that. I learned that I don't need it. Let me tell you something. I used to always tell people when they come to church, you know, if you want to enter into a standard, if God's talking to you about not wearing something or not doing something or not going somewhere, why don't you just try it for 90 days? 30, try 30 days. Try, try wearing dresses only for 30 days and you'll find out, wow, this is not bad. This is kind of nice. I, I, I look like a woman. I, I, I feel like a woman. Uh, uh, I, I'm not going to wear jewelry for 30, 30, 60, 90. No, I, no, I don't. I'm, not, I, I'm talking about the woman. Thank you. Oh. No, I'm just naughty. Superfluity of naughtiness. And always, you need to repent. My name is not James. Oh. No, I'm just naughty. <laughs> Let me start it again. So when the woman does this, she's gonna feel more pretty. And she's gonna... Oh, it took me a while to feel whatever happened, but that's the whole thing. I'm talking about me. Oh, we have fun. Ain't it nice to have fun in church? Amen. Ain't it nice to have fun in church? Praise God. Try not drinking the sodas for 30 days, 60 days, nine, and you'll find out you really don't miss it. Yeah. You really don't need it. And when a thing happened with the sodas, and now I've been changed. I barely drink. I love water. I love water. I drink water. Ice, a bunch of ice. I want a big cup, and I fill it with ice. I just keep putting water in, and it's free. I, I go to, when I travel, I can just go to the thing and fill it up. Everybody's paying for stuff. I'm like, shh, water. <laughs> free. Ice is free. But I'm, I'm telling you that the Lord showed me that when, when I stop eating this chocolate, I'm going to purge myself of this craving that I have for this chocolate. And it's really not that good for me to do. I'm getting older now. I mean, I know I don't look it. You know, I don't look young and strapping and everything. But I'll laugh at that if you want to. But I'm getting older. I got to take better. I got kids. I got young kids. I started late. I got young kids. And I got to be strong for these children. So the way that you get rid of this carnal curiosity, the way you beat it when it becomes the carnal lust that begins to come into your mind, you purge it. 
Hallelujah. You get this attitude of, no, not today. I don't yes, care if the earth falls off. Yeah. Not today. You get that, that grit. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something I've done before. I'm done here. You got this face. You know when you say, I'm not going to do it, and you're like, I'm not going to do it. But you got to get that, oh, I want to see something like this. Oh. See, you're not doing it. You're not going to all fail. Oh, yeah, right there. Oh, you look like good. Oh, you're too happy though. Our two don't get, oh. Oh, that was here. You've got to get that grit. Like, I don't care. I'm going to fight. You don't see football players go up the line saying, I'm going to knock you down. <laughs> you better watch out because I'm going to get you. Right. Oh, no. They're like, oh. You can hear when you watch a football. You can hear the contact. You can right. hear the aggression. That's how we got to get towards our sin, our lust, the carnality. We've got to be like, oh, not today. Not today, devil. You're not coming with my heart. You're not taking my wife, my kid. You're not taking my husband. No matter who it is. I'm not letting you out of my house. I'm going to get that grit. I'm going to get some power in my conviction, in my resolve. And say, not today. I'm going to win in Jesus' name. I'm almost, I got five minutes to pray so hard. I'm watching. I like to. I like. I don't want to take advantage of the of the honor that He's given. Praise God. We've got youthful lusts that come into our lives. It says, "Purge yourself." Still on Second Timothy two twenty one. Purge yourself of these things. He shall be a vessel unto honor. When you learn how to purge, does anybody want to have an honorable life? Does anybody want to be honored by God? Isn't it amazing? There's another scripture. I don't have it, but I preached it one time. When you become, you become a servant of God, He honors you. And you may not... That takes me in a way that blows my mind. Because this God of the universe, of universes, He's bigger than, than all the galaxies. And I've got a sermon I've got to preach. I'm going to show you some of this stuff. How big God is. And this God, who is so pure and so good and so amazing, honors us. Because of our service. Well, it says the same thing about purging. You will become a vessel of honor. You can now be used of God. I'm going to tell you right now. That preacher, that pastor right there, if you want to be used, you've got to clean up your vessel. Because you're going to be an example to people out there. You have got to become a vessel of honor. The way you do that is you purge. It says, and meet the master's use and prepare unto every good work. I love reading scripture when I say stuff like that because it just backs up what I just said. Verse 22, flee also. Okay, you want to learn how to uh, uh, fight or defeat carnal curiosity? Flee also youthful lusts. Don't embrace them. Right. you got to run. you got to be like that young man Joseph when that woman uh, came up and said, Hey, <laughs> how you doing? Come on here, young man. He's like, Phew. He's gone. Left it. He didn't even go back for his jacket. I'm out of here. I got to run. That We got to flee youthful lust, but follow righteousness. Right. Run from lust. Follow righteousness. You know, God is so profound, but this is not brain surgery. Mm -hmm. Leave lust. Go to righteousness. Right. Faith. Charity, which is love. Peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Start getting around some people that want to live for God instead of the devil. Come on. Praise the Lord. That is how we beat carnal curiosity. 1 Peter 1.14 As obedient children, not fashion yourself according to the fault. You become a new creature when you come to God. A new creation. You come out of the water a new person. You put off the old and put on the new. So in 1 Peter 1.14 it says fashion yourself according to don't fasten yourselves according to the form of lust in your ignorance. It's not very smart Amen. to stay carnal after you get yourself repented, baptized, get the Holy Ghost. Yes, yeah. We gotta follow righteousness and love and charity and service. Hallelujah. But as he which hath called you is holy. So be he holy. Hallelujah. And all, someone say all. all. All manner of conversation. And it's not just talking about talking. And everything you do. And everything you do, seek holiness. Because it is written, be ye holy. 
For I am holy. Hallelujah. God saying you need to be holy. You need to be a vessel of honor. You need to leave youthful lust and run to God. Run from sin and run to repentance. Amen. First Timothy 4, 3. For thine, sorry, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Amen. Just because they don't, don't mean you have to. Right. Let the they be they and you be you. They will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn their ears from truth and be turned unto fables. Amen. And the scripture talks about the choking on a gnat, the swallowing a camel. That's today. The doctrine, the doctrine is, is so clear. People have gotten so far from what is written in the Word of God. It is amazing. We, all the things you've heard me say just now, reading from the Word of God, but people today are saying, oh, well, I'm a sinner and I sin every day as a Christian. Come on. I had a friend of mine the other day tell me, I had to, ooh, I'm learning church, I'm learning. I had to fire my tongue. I, gave, I, I went to his office, he works with me, and I put on his computer, when he wasn't there, I put the online Bible on his computer, and then I put Acts 2.38, big bold letters. The whole scripture says, I want you to learn that scripture. Well, thank you. Thank you. Because, oh, I'm a Christian. I just don't go to church and I just don't read about it. Hmm. And I wanted a ooh, girl. I, was, ooh. I just smiled, loved him. See, back in the day, I would have took that Bible and said, What are you talking about? What do you mean you're a Christian and you don't go to church? But it's not working on it. That's not charity to whack someone with the Bible. That's not love. That's not patience. That's not mercy. That's not long no, suffering. That's not no, temperance. No, That's sir. not the fruit of the Spirit. Uh -uh. So what we need to do is change from the carnal curiosity and have spiritual curiosity. Why don't we start being more curious about what's in the Word of God? I'm going to tell you something. That Bible is awesome. It's got drama. It's got love stories. It's got war. It's got lies and treachery. It's got everything. It's better than... And why do you think it's the bestseller every year? Hands down, that book is awesome. Why don't you get curious about memorizing some scripture? Hey! Why don't you get curious about doing some prayer? See how long you can pray. Not how long you can drink without falling over. Why don't you see how long I can read the Bible without falling asleep? How long can I pray without falling asleep? Get curious. Get drawn to the things of God. i got to hurry up. Proverbs 4.14. Enter not into the path of the wicked. And go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. This is the Bible. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it. Pass away. Amen. God couldn't be more clear about what he wants. But people don't want sound doctrine today. Psalm 25, 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Maybe if you would come up. You got to fear him. I already did that one last time. Philippians 4, 9. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard. You heard a whole lot tonight. Amen. I want to know if you've received it. I want to know if you've really heard it. Because if you heard it, you'll do it. The things you've seen, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. If you do the things that I'm preaching about, and what pastors preach about, and all these ministers, Brother Lee, if you do these things, the God of peace will be with you. So do you really want to be with you? Do you really want God? Then we've got to do some work. Now I'm done. I'm going to do this last thing. I'm done. Curiosity, I'm going to tell you how you beat curiosity. You become satisfied. You become satisfied. Come on, curiosity, I love my wife. I'm satisfied with her. Come on. I could have 10 women come up and parade and flirt and smile, and I'm like, I'm satisfied. Right. Amen. When you're satisfied with God, you won't want sin. If you're satisfied with your life is right now, regardless of the situation, then you won't be jealous and want something else and start going down the right road. You've got to be satisfied. Okay? If Thanksgiving, my wife said, are you going to take the Thanksgiving message? No! But I can put it in. If you're satisfied, you're thankful. Right. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving, be thankful for what you have, what God has given you, and you won't want to sin. Because you'll be so grateful with all that God has given you, and you won't want the sin. Psalm 17, 17, 15. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I wake with thy likeness. There's more scriptures that say that, but I'm just going to do that one because I'm done. It says it in the Word of God. Psalms is a, a, a tremendous book of wisdom. Be satisfied. This is not just an altar call. 
that's going to come. It's a call to repentance. Let's stand. Let's stand. It's done. <laughs> Three minutes over. Praise the Lord. I had no scripture, but I gave you plenty. And I got to the point. You got to be satisfied. That's how you beat calm curiosity. You get satisfied with whatever's going on, whatever God's given you. This is a call. Right now, an altar call. That's what we're going to have. It's a call to repentance. It's a call of duty to service. It's a call to be thankful and live in Thanksgiving, not just in November. Mm, come on. A call to be satisfied with God and all He has to offer you. That should be easy. If someone gave you a billion dollars in a briefcase, you would be satisfied. You would say, I don't need any more money. But God has given you more than any money can be counted. So why aren't we satisfied with what he gives us? When he's given you the Holy Ghost. That's more than 10 billion, 100 billion, 100 trillion. You can't put a price on the Holy Ghost because there is riches in heaven. We don't need the world. If you're in a position where you're wanting that depth, if you're already repentant, just get deeper in God. But if you're not repentant, we need to get there so we can move on. we got to raise the bar. We know how to do that. We've done this before. We've raised the bar of this church years and years and years. We've been doing it, and we're going to continue to do it. But I want you to come to this altar, one and all, getting ready to take our step towards the more intimate, towards the deeper, learning how to fight the lusts by purging ourselves. Someone come up here and make a commitment right now, God. I'm going to purge myself of sin, of malice, of superfluity, of naughtiness, of all the things in my life that are going to cause me harm, and I know what they are. I'm going to get rid of them. A message like this could change your life forever if you let it and hold on to it. It's going to be on the archive. It's online. You can go back and watch it anytime you want to remember that I've got to get rid of carnal curiosity. I've got to seek the things of God with all my heart. got to be satisfied with what God has to give me. I'm going to purge. I'm not going to go the way of the wicked. I'm going to seek the things that God has for me. I'm going to seek that covenant that God wants to put me in. In Jesus' name.